So, um, hi everyone, welcome to today's special CCE MMP seminar. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people of the Kuli Nations as the traditional owners of the land on which our Parkview campus stands. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you are all joining me from today. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and to the Aboriginal elders of other communities. My name is Yan Jiang. I'm a postdoc research fellow from Monash University. Today, I will be chairing this session. Um, this meeting will be recorded and shared on the CCE MMP website. Please stay on mute while our guest speaker is talking. At the end of the seminar, there will be a Q&A session. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your questions, or you can type your questions in the chat or raise your hands. Today is our honor to have Dr. Beatrice Hagridas to give the presentation. Dr. Hagridas obtained her PhD in biochemistry at the University of Zaragoza in Spain in 2011. Then she joined Dr. Ingo Gregor's lab at the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology to work on AMPA glutamate receptors. In 2019, she was awarded a Ramoniga Fellowship from the Spanish research agency, allowing her to start her independent career at the Institute for Biocomputation and the Physics of Complex Systems, um, where she is now focused on the structure and the dynamics of calcium permeable AMPARs and their complexes with auxiliary proteins. Today, Dr. Hogdas will uh, be presenting her and her lab's research on structure studies of heteromeric AMPA glutamate receptors. Okay, I will hand over to our speaker, um, Beatrice, so you can start your talk whenever you are ready. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this kind introduction and this invitation. Uh, my name is Beatriz and I am currently working in Spain at the BIFI Institute uh, in the University of Zaragoza. Uh, but I was a postdoc before at the MRC LMB in Cambridge, and there is where I did uh, I started this uh, work on AMPA glutamate receptor complexes, and then in the last couple of years we have been finalizing uh, this work. So uh, AMPA glutamate receptors, uh, sorry, uh, AMPA glutamate receptors. I don't know what is happening. Uh, AMPA glutamate receptors uh, are located. Sorry, I don't know what is happening. Uh, AMPA glutamate receptors are located at chemical synapses. Uh, in chemical synapses, when calcium reaches the action terminal, uh, sorry, when action potentials reach action terminal, uh, uh, there is a, a vesicle fusion event and release of neurotransmitters into the synaptic left. And there are different types of neurotransmitter receptors. Uh, uh, some neurotransmitter receptors are ionotropic receptors, meaning that they are ion channels. And therefore, when neurotransmitter binds, uh, uh, the neurotransmitter receptor will open and we will have ions uh, entering or leaving the neuron. And there, there are metabotropic receptors, uh, which are uh, GPCRs, and they start uh, signaling cascades, uh, 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 which lead to finally opening or closure of um, ion channels. Uh, glutamate is the main excitatory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, because when it binds to uh, ionotropic glutamate receptor, it leads to membrane depolarization of this uh, postsynaptic neuron. Um, Ionotropic uh, glutamate receptors are therefore ion channels that bind glutamate. And there are uh, four main families of uh, IGLUARs, uh, AMPA receptors, kinase receptors, NMDA receptors, and GLUD receptors. And as you can see here in this uh, figure, there are uh, several uh, protein coding uh, uh, subunits uh, for each of these uh, AMPA receptor uh, families. In the case of uh, sorry, AMPA receptors, uh, we always say that AMPA receptors mediate fast excitatory neurotransmission. And this is because uh, when they bind glutamate, uh, AMPA receptors uh, open in the submillisecond time scale, and they also quickly close uh, uh, in the uh, um, milliseconds time scale. And this is quite different, for example, to the other main family of IGLUARs that are NMDA receptors, 
which have a much a slower kinetics, as you can see here. Um, AMPA receptors and iGluars in general also participate in neuronal plasticity. And here I show you a very, very simplified way of uh, what is neuronal plasticity, uh, which is the mechanism of strengthening or weakening of synapses uh, induced by activity. So uh, AMPA receptors uh, participate in two processes. They participate in long-term potentiation or LTP and long-term depression of, or LTD. So in long-term potentiation, uh, what we have is an incorporation of AMPA receptors into synapses. And therefore, uh, this synapse uh, will be strengthened uh, for the same vesicle release event. The response of this postsynaptic neuron here uh, will be uh, bigger. Uh, the, in the mechanism of long-term depression, what happens is that we have removal of AMPA receptors uh, uh, from uh, the synapse. And therefore, uh, for a vesicle release event, the response of this postsynaptic neuron uh, will be uh, uh, weakened. <clears throat> uh, IGLUARs uh, are also re related with uh, several neurological diseases. And one of the mechanisms is excitotoxicity. Excitotoxicity, it's a glutamate-induced uh, neuronal death. And this uh, process happens in several disease conditions, for example, in ischemia, for example, after a stroke, or in ischemia in newborns, uh, in epilepsy, and also in ALS. Uh, uh, in, in those cases, uh, there, there are abnormal levels of glutamate and abnormal activation of uh, iGluars that leads to high calcium levels within the neuron that finally uh, lead to a neuronal cell death. Um, uh, uh, IGLUARs are also related with other neurological diseases, for example, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. And apart from excitotoxicity that has been also reported in, in, in these uh, diseases, uh, it has been reported that amyloid beta or alpha-synuclein, that are the proteins that aggregate in, in these diseases, uh, could also modulate uh, the function of NMDA receptors and AMPA receptors. Um, therefore, iGLUARs are the target of several drugs, for example, for the treatment of epilepsy uh, and also uh, for the treatment of some mood disorders. Uh, here, uh, I show you uh, the first structure, the landmark, landmark structure for uh, uh, the AMPA receptors that was solved already uh, more than 10 years ago uh, uh, in Guo's lab uh, uh, by Alexander Sobolevsky. And um, as you can see here, uh, AMPA receptors are heterotetramers. And in this case, uh, uh, this is a GLUE2, uh, so this is a homomer, but in general, in the brain, AMPA receptors form uh, heterotetramers. As I said in the previous slide, there are four AMPA receptor subunits, GLUE1, 2, 3, and 4. And basically, in the brain, all the AMPA receptors that contain GLUE2 are calcium impermeable, while the AMPA receptors that lack GLUE2, they are calcium permeable. Um, different brain regions express uh, different sets of AMPA receptor subunits. And here I show you a proteomics study uh, published a few years ago, where they analyzed uh, the expression of different AMPA receptor subunits in different brain regions. And as you can see here, uh, the red, uh, uh, red color corresponds to the GLUE2 subunit, and it is the main, uh, sorry, the main subunit in most brain regions meaning that uh, uh, GLUE2 containing receptors and therefore calcium impermeable AMPA receptors are the most abundant forms of AMPA receptors uh, in the brain. So <clears throat> uh, as you have seen from uh, this uh, structure, uh, AMPA receptors are modular proteins. They have different domain layers and I'm going to describe uh, how is the overall architecture of, of these uh, receptors. Uh, uh, first, we have this region here, the N-terminal domain layer, which is composed of uh, two dimers, uh, uh, really high affinity dimers. Uh, the uh, the N-terminal domain layer uh, initiates receptor assembly in the, in the ER, 
and its role is not really uh, understood. Um, <clears throat> if you, for example, remove the entity layer from the uh, uh, from uh, uh, in, and you express the AMPA receptor in hex cells, the receptor is function it's completely functional. It gates perfectly well, and uh, uh, basically it works well. And um, uh, its structure is very similar, for example, or its folding is similar to the folding of MGLUARs. Uh, but in this case, in the case of AMPA receptor, it is not known whether it binds any small molecule or any protein at all. Uh, here uh, on the left, you can see the sequence conservation of AMPA receptors, and you can observe that the NTD is the less conserved part of the AMPA receptor in, in cyan, in, in light blue. Uh, uh, there are the more uh, most variable uh, residues. So. It is not uh, clear why uh, these receptors have this large part that is more or less 200 kilodalton, and its role is not uh, clear at all. Um, a, a recent reports uh, have uh, demonstrated that in the brain, it could be key uh, for anchoring receptors at synapses in the synaptic left. Uh, although uh, it is not clear uh, whether there are specific proteins that will bind to specific AMPA receptors or uh, what is uh, the role of, of this uh, domain. Uh, here below, we have the ligand binding domain and the ligand binding domain is the region of the AMPA receptor that binds uh, glutamate. And there are again, uh, two dimers of the ligand binding domain and it's really highly conserved. And uh, uh, basically when glutamate binds uh, to the ligand binding domain, uh, if there is a short pulse of glutamate, like here on the, on the left, uh, the receptor will open and it will also quickly deactivate. If uh, there is a long pulse of glutamate, uh, what we will have is a desensitization process uh, where the ion channel uh, uh, is closed although uh, glutamate is uh, still bound here in the ligand binding domain. Uh, the structural biology of, of uh, the LVDs is it's, it's large. There are more than 100 crystal structures. Uh, in the last uh, 20 years, uh, there have been uh, several structures with uh, agonists, antagonists, and allosteric modulators. And here I just show you uh, what, what happens uh, when glutamate uh, binds in the cleft in this region here uh, of the ligand binding domain. And basically uh, there is a clamshell uh, movement uh, uh, of, the, of the domain and the, uh, this cleft uh, closes. And this is also uh, uh, associated uh, with changes at the dimer uh, level. Then uh, in the resting state uh, that you, you can see here, uh, uh, the cleft uh, for glutamate binding is open and uh, the dimer form extensive interfaces uh, between protomers. Then uh, when glutamate binds here in the cleft, there is a closure of, of, of the, the structure and there is a separation of the lower lobes of the uh, uh, this uh, lower region of, of the ligand binding domain. And finally, in the desensitized state here, uh, glutamate is bound, but there is a relaxation of the structure and this, is, this upper part is separated. All these structural changes are uh, translated or transmitted uh, through uh, three linkers to the transmembrane domain. Uh, the transmembrane domain is the region that uh, contains the channel and it also contains the gate. Uh, here in the center of the uh, ion channel, uh, there is a position in the GLUE2 subunit, uh, which codes an arginine uh, in GLUE2, but it's a glutamine in the uh, GLUE2 lacking uh, in the other receptor, sorry. And these positions uh, determine calcium permeability. And um, finally, we have the CTD, the C-terminal uh, domains, and, and these domains uh, are uh, interacting uh, with uh, several proteins at uh, the postsynaptic density. Um, Ampar receptors not only form homomers and heteromers with different brain distributions, but they also interact with auxiliary proteins. And there are more than 30 proteins uh, known to interact with Ampar receptors. And here, I show you the main families of transmembrane uh, uh, proteins that interact and modulate amper receptor functions. 
Uh, we have a uh, TARFs, that is the main uh, auxiliary protein family. Most AMPA receptors in the brain are interacting <clears throat> with TARFs. Then we have cornitions and GSE1L, and all of them uh, uh, bind to the same regions of the AMPA receptors, and all of them have uh, four helical uh, transmembrane segments. And then there are uh, two other families, uh, CCAMPs and Syndic, that uh, in principle, they only have one uh, a helical segment, and uh, it is not known how they interact or how they modulate AMPA receptors functions. <clears throat> in the case of TARPs, there are two main families, type 1 TARPs and type 2 TARPs. And the type 1 TARP are the most abundant TARPs in the brain, and they modulate all aspects of AMPA receptor function. They modulate trafficking, they modulate pharmacology, and they modulate uh, uh, the properties, uh, kinetic properties of the receptor. Uh, with this in mind, uh, the goal of my project was to analyze the structure of a GLUE 1 2 TARP 8 complex in different functional states. And basically, we wanted uh, to understand how this uh, auxiliary protein modulates the function of uh, heteromeric receptors. And when we started this project, there, there wasn't any structural information on heteromers bound to uh, uh, TARPs. And also, uh, this uh, complex was relevant because it's uh, quite abundant in, in the hippocampus, this uh, specific complex. So I, with this in mind, I, I <clears throat> try to drop the receptor in different functional states. Uh, first, I focus on the resting state, and I use MBQX, which is an antagonist, and it, it keeps the receptor in a closed conformation. Then <clears throat> I also try to uh, incubate my, my samples with a glutamate. And if you have a, a glutamate receptor with a high concentration of glutamate, uh, it will uh, be completely desensitized. And finally, to drop the open state, I, I also use a combination of drugs. In this case, I use a cyclotiazide that you can see here, CTZ in the presence of L-glutamate. And uh, basically uh, this drug uh, or this uh, small molecule, what it does in the presence of uh, cyclotiazide, uh, uh, and when you do a long pulse of glutamate, the receptor will open, but it won't desensitize. So it will remain open. So <clears throat> uh, TARPs, uh, as I said, uh, modulate a uh, kinetics of AMPA receptors. And uh, basically, for example, uh, they make the receptor deactivate uh, more slowly, as you can see here in the red traces. Uh, the receptor also desensitizes more slowly if you have a long pulse of glutamate. And in the case of type uh, uh, 1B TARPs, uh, such as gamma A TARP, uh, they also recover from the desensitized state, that is what I am showing here, uh, more slowly than the receptor uh, in the presence of other types of TARPs or with no TARP. Basically, when you desensitize the receptor and then you stop the pulse of glutamate and you start to do again some short pulse of glutamate, uh, the current, uh, uh, it will take a while until the current reach uh, the original uh, levels. This process is called recovery. Um, <clears throat> Uh, first of all, I, I, I try to produce the protein sample, and then I, uh, we decide to try uh, this approach. Uh, uh, we uh, created a construct uh, where GLUE2 is bound uh, with TARP gamma 8 uh, covalently bound, and then we also add a GFP uh, uh, tag at the end. And then uh, in the case of GLUE1, uh, we use a flag tag. Uh, with this uh, mixture of, of proteins, we will get receptors that co will contain uh, two tarps uh, uh, per uh, AMPA receptor. And this stoichiometry is, is known to be uh, relevant in the brain. Um, when you uh, transfect or when we transfect these two constructs into a uh, HEC uh, cells, uh, basically, uh, what we get is a mixture of homomeric receptors and heteromeric receptors. And then what I did uh, to purify this was to use a sequential uh, purification. First, I did a, a GFP purification that allowed me to uh, isolate only GLUE2-containing receptors, as you can see here. 
And then I use a flag affinity purification that allowed us to remove uh, uh, the glue to homomers. And, and this is the protein that we finally, uh, I mean, the gel of, of the protein that we finally got uh, with glue one and glue two uh, gamma eight. Uh, we produce this protein in, 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 we isolated this protein in digitonin. <clears throat> uh, first, we focus on the resting state of the glutamate receptors, and you may imagine from my uh, uh, purification strategy, uh, protein levels uh, were not too high because we were losing a lot of homomers during the purification protocol. So uh, we had only low concentrations of the AMPA receptor, and therefore uh, we had to use carbon-coated grids. And uh, uh, this was uh, 2019, and there uh, we were using a Volta faceplate because uh, with the carbon, uh, the contrast uh, was not great. So <clears throat> uh, we, we were able to determine the full length structure that you can see here. Uh, GLUE2 is this uh, red subunit. Uh, GLUE1 is the blue subunit, and, and we have two uh, TARP uh, binding sites. And uh, because this domain layer here, the entity <clears throat> uh, was uh, really dynamic, we had to focus on this region, on the TMD and ligand binding domain regions to get a, a better resolution structure. And this is what I show you here. This is the uh, final map that uh, we got uh, for the TMD, uh, TMD LBT region. We have the two tarps, we have a glue one, glue two, and here you can see some lipids that uh, were uh, bound uh, to the protein. Uh, this structure had an overall resolution of around four angstrom. Um, <clears throat> the structure allowed us to, to uh, determine a, that a, a glue two uh, was occupying this position, and this is relevant uh, because this position at the level of the pore, it's uh, what we call a pore distal position, which is the subunit that dominates gating. And uh, uh, we also observe early during uh, processing that we had uh, these lipids uh, bound to the protein. And we also uh, we were also able to observe uh, the binding site uh, uh, for uh, some drugs that are specific for uh, TARP gamma eight, and these drugs that uh, do not bind to uh, stargazing to TARP gamma two, they only bind to TARP gamma eight, and and this structure was also the starting point point for uh, some uh, docking studies on 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 small molecules, uh, <clears throat> but. Uh, we wanted to continue uh, understanding the structure of, of uh, how TARP gamma eight modulates amper receptor. So <clears throat> we tried to trap the receptor in the open state. As I said before, I use uh, we use cyclotiazide and L-glutamate. And here, uh, with the help of, of Bianca, uh, that she was a PhD student at Ingo Greger's lab, uh, we managed to move from uh, uh, carbon-coated grids and, and the Volta faceplate to freestanding ice grids, uh, where we got a much higher concentration of protein, around three milligrams per milliliter. So uh, we were able to collect data in, uh, on a K3 uh, detector. And here I show you some uh, raw images of the re uh, receptor. Maybe you can uh, see here the transmembrane domain, ligand binding domain. And, and NTD layers of, of this receptor. Uh, <clears throat> we collect a large data set, and I can I show you here the two Ds. Uh, you can see that the transmembrane and ligand binding domains are very well defined, and, and they, they these two Ds were quite promising. Although the NTD layer is clearly very diffuse in these two Ds, uh, meaning that really uh, the NTD is moving. And this has been reported before. So uh, basically we only focus on the TMD and uh, ligand binding domain regions. Uh, <clears throat> basically uh, uh, we had around 10,000 10, images and uh, using 2D and 3D classifications, we isolate a subset of, of particles, around half a million particles, uh, that uh, without the NTD layer, they were clearly showing AMPA features, uh, the ligand binding domain, transmembrane domains, and here the, the two bumps of, of TARP. And using a, a, a C2 symmetry uh, plus 3D classifications without alignment, we isolated a subset of particles, around uh, 80,000 particles, 
that uh, had a, 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 that were showing a, a really a really good quality. You can see here our map. Uh, it is around 3.5 angstrom resolution with even higher resolution at the transmembrane domain. And <clears throat> you can see here that uh, there are also some lipids bound to the structure and uh, the quality of the, of the transmembrane domain especially was quite good. And we could even see uh, some densities uh, lining the pore uh, of the AMPA receptor. And this was seen not only in the C2 symmetry refined models, but also in C1 models. And uh, I show you here uh, some details of, of the maps and a comparison with uh, uh, the uh, resting state. This is the tarp, these are the lipids. Uh, that some of them are really uh, uh, bound uh, uh, to the pore of the amber receptor. And uh, if you now uh, focus on this region here, uh, I will uh, change from open uh, to resting state. This is the open state where the lower lobes are separated. And you can see here that in the resting state, these two domains are approaching. And there are also changes in this part here, which is the gate of the, of the amber receptor. This is in the open state. And now I'll show you uh, the resting state. Okay. So that was good, uh, but uh, we also wanted to analyze the sensitized uh, state of the AMPA receptor. And we had tried a lot to get the structures only in the presence of L glutamate. And we were getting low resolution structures. And uh, I came back to this data set where we had half a million particles. And when we were doing these uh, 3D classifications without alignment, we were observing that there was some heterogeneity at the ligand binding domain. And uh, we came back to this data set. Uh, uh, we refined this data set in C1 symmetry, and then we did 3D classifications. And we observed that there were some receptors where the ligand binding domain was showing uh, the typical features of the sensitized AMPA receptor. So we took all these particles and we did again 3D classifications with, without alignment. And again, we isolated a subset of around 100,000 particles, which was clearly a desensitized AMPA receptor. Uh, the quality of the map, as you can see here, is not great for the ligand binding domain but at the level of the, of the transmembrane domain, it is quite good. And uh, it has an overall resolution of 3.6 angstrom. And uh, while the ligand binding domain is not uh, really well uh, uh, defined, uh, the conformation is clearly a, a desensitized conformation. And I, uh, I compare here the, the, the two maps. Uh, uh, this is the open state map. And now I'll, I'll show uh, uh, the uh, desensitized uh, map. Uh, this is the gate of the AMPA receptor in the open state. And now I change to the uh, desensitized state. You can see that this is the gate completely closed upon desensitization. And then we focus on this region here, which is the region that determines calcium permeability. And again, there are slight structural changes uh, uh, in this region. Um, here I show you uh, uh, the, the two uh, maps uh, that we obtained, the open map uh, here in the top and the desensitized map here. Uh, in this top view, uh, you can see that the ligand binding, uh, sorry, the ligand uh, binding domain uh, uh, dimer uh, disrupts uh, the, this, um, the upper interfaces, it's broken. And uh, here uh, I show you the, the cavities, the, the, the pore lining cavity, uh, the open state is, is clearly open. And in the, uh, in the desensitized state, there are uh, uh, some uh, constrictions uh, uh, through the, the, the pore lining uh, cavities. Um, here uh, uh, I analyze, I compare the pore dimensions between uh, open, desensitized and resting states. And basically, the part of the AMPA receptor that really opens uh, upon uh, 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 glutamate and cyclodiazide binding is this part here, what we call the gate, which is at the top part of the transmembrane domain. Um, and this is a detail of the uh, uh, pore lining uh, uh, cavities in the desensitized state and open state. 
And uh, uh, we also observe uh, some densities uh, that uh, you can see here and there as well in the desensitized state. Uh, as I said before, these densities were also present uh, in, 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 in the maps when we were refining in C2. And we think those uh, might be uh, sodium ions, although we are not uh, really sure uh, of this. Um, then uh, I compare here the open and desensitized structures. Basically, this helix here is what we call the M2 helix that is forming the gate of the AMPA receptor. And uh, here we would have the transmembrane domain, and here we would have uh, uh, the, the channel. And here there is a transition from the twofold symmetry that we observe in the extracellular part of the receptor to the fourfold symmetry that we have in the ion channel. And you can observe that upon opening, there is a, a unzipping or, or unfolding of this uh, top part of these helices here. And basically one of the helix, uh, 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 in this case, the glue to helix uh, 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 kinks at this region, uh, opening the gate of the AMPA receptor. And in the other subunit, uh, the blue one here, uh, one of the turns of the helices is, is, is lost. And this uh, concerted movements lead to the opening of, of this uh, gate. Um, then if we see below in what is the selectivity filter that determines calcium permeability, there are not a uh, major changes between open and desensitized. And we only see uh, some movement on, on this residue uh, that is the arginine that determines calcium impermeability. Uh, this is the desensitized state and this is the open state. Uh, we indeed observe uh, some changes in, in some residues here uh, in isolucine 613, uh, which is located in the M3 uh, helix, that is the gate of the AMPA receptor. And indeed, uh, we mutated uh, this residue. Uh, uh, we generate a, a, an alanine mutant. Um, basically, what we observe is that if we have here a, a, an alanine, the uh, conductance of AMPA receptors is increased. So uh, we think uh, this region here is connecting uh, 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 the uh, heal, uh, sorry the, the gate of the AMPA receptors with the pore of the AMPA receptor, and it's somehow restricting the movement of this residue that determines uh, calcium permeability. Uh, uh, I, I have here a morph uh, comparing the three structures that I have shown you before open state, uh, desensitized state, and resting state. And this is the resting state structure. Again, if you focus on this region, you will see that uh, this part is the uh, region that uh, the ligand binding domain is the region that moves more. So basically, this is uh, an open receptor that is also pulling from this linker here, a desensitized receptor, and then it comes back to the resting state. And if we see uh, from the top, uh, this is the transition to opening that leads to the opening of these helices, the sensitization, and then uh, back to the resting state. Um, that was nice uh, to see all these structural changes, but indeed many of these changes had been reported years ago, uh, only studying the ligand binding domains. And we were not really saying what was the role of TARP in the modulation of AMPA receptor uh, uh, properties. So basically uh, we came back to our, our data. And uh, uh, this is a, an scheme of TARP. And uh, these are the extracellular loops of TARPs. And uh, this region here, uh, it's very important because it's the region that uh, changes between uh, type 1A TARPs such as gamma 2 and type 1B TARPs such as gamma 8. So basically gamma 8 TARPs, they have a much longer loop which uh, indeed we couldn't observe in our, in our structures. You can see here the map. Uh, we see this uh, helical segment. And if we uh, reduce the level, we also see uh, some densities here. But basically, uh, uh, the densities, uh, the cryo densities for these loops and this extracellular loop are, uh, were completely missing. So um, this wasn't good. But uh, again, we had a large data set. And uh, we decided to go back to this data set and try to try to extract more information about uh, TARP modulation. And basically, we took our half a million particles and uh, we create a mask uh, focusing on two ligand binding domains 
and the extracellular portion of TARP. And we perform uh, 3D classifications without alignment. And basically, uh, these 3D classifications without alignment uh, led uh, to these maps, which are not great. Although uh, you can see that clearly these two maps, in these two maps, uh, the TARP loop that you can see here, it is interacting uh, with this ligand binding domain on the left. Uh, here again, we see this contact uh, of the TARP loop with the ligand binding domain. And in the case of uh, the other classes, these three classes, we were observing an interaction with the other subunit, uh, uh, with the other ligand binding domain, or no interaction at all. We continue processing uh, this subset of particles. We took all these, uh, what we call BD interactions, because they are interacting with the BD change. Uh, we, we refine the full length, and uh, we observe that indeed uh, one of the loops uh, was clearly touching the ligand binding domain. And uh, to our surprise, what we observe is that the ligand binding domain in these uh, structures where, where uh, there is this connection, these ligand binding domains were completely desensitized. These structures were not high resolution, but and, and we were not able to see the channel to be sure that these uh, structures were desensitized. But uh, the conformation of the ligand binding domain was really clearly uh, desensitized. Then uh, when we uh, uh, pull together all the uh, uh, AC uh, uh, classes or no classes, uh, we did again a, a refinement of the full length. And uh, in this case, uh, the ligand binding domain uh, was clearly open. We had this separation that is a characteristic of the open state. Uh, so we thought that uh, maybe uh, in the desensitized state, we mostly see uh, this uh, interaction with the glue to subunit with this ligand binding domain. And in the open state, we see uh, interaction, either no interaction or interaction with glue one. Uh, because these maps were not great, uh, we, we did a, a molecular dynamic simulations. And these uh, MD simulations were done by Jan Niklas Dork, uh, James Krieger, and Sahir Saik, uh, uh, also uh, from Ingo Greger's lab. They did uh, all atoms, molecular dynamic simulations, and uh, with the TMD and ligand binding domain. So they built a, a, a model for the, for the loop that was missing in, in the structures. And uh, uh, they did uh, around 400 milliseconds or 350 milliseconds uh, simulations uh, to analyze uh, uh, which uh, patches, which regions of the AMPA receptors uh, were contacted by the TARP extracellular loop. And indeed, in this uh, uh, plot that uh, I'm showing you here, basically we have uh, the residues that are uh, uh, during more time uh, interacting between uh, the TARP loop and uh, the AMPA receptors. And indeed, uh, they observe both uh, the residues in patch one, which is a desensitized uh, uh, state interaction, and also a patch uh, two interactions. Um, in the case of uh, this was done with the resting state uh, with resting state um, uh, structure, but it was also done with the open state. And in the case of the open state, it was clear that only interactions with this region here, with this blue uh, subunit, uh, were observed. Uh, we continue uh, analyzing this uh, uh, using electrophysiology because again, the, the structural data were not really high resolution. So uh, uh, we went back to electrophysiology and here uh, Hintz Ho and Dick Watson and Remy Leib uh, were characterizing uh, some mutants. And basically what uh, they did was replace the extracellular loop of TARP gamma-8 uh, uh, um, uh, in uh, uh, TARP uh, gamma-2 and uh, they analyze uh, different uh, parameters. They analyze the activation, the sensitization, and recovery. And if you remember from one of uh, my uh, previous slices, recovery is uh, one of the properties that TARP gamma eight modulate uh, differentially from TARP, uh, other TARPs in AMPA receptors. And indeed, uh, uh, if you can see here, this is A1, A2 gamma eight, that is uh, our construct. 
uh, uh, if you have a gamma two there, uh, uh, it uh, recovers faster from this recovery, as you can see here. If you uh, uh, replace the extracellular loop of a uh, TARP gamma eight with that of a uh, TARP gamma two, uh, gamma two uh, you uh, we get a phenotype very similar to that of a uh, gamma two. And apart from that, we also did uh, introduce some glycans there. Uh, uh, and we introduced these gly glycans in the ligand binding domain, in the region that is uh, touching the ligand binding domain in the sensitization. And in this case, uh, we also uh, observed that when we were having this glycan, uh, the recovery was even slower. So uh, our current uh, hypothesis is that um, uh, basically, uh, in the desensitized state, uh, the tarp gamma eight loop uh, is contacted. Uh, it's contacting uh, the glue two ligand binding domain and is uh, stabilizing uh, this uh, desensitized state. Um, um, uh, this is uh, the summary of, of, of what we have uh, done. We have determined the structures of a closed state, uh, an open state, and a desensitized state of an ampar receptors. Uh, here, I, I have to say that uh, it is proposed that uh, when AMPA receptors bind glutamate, uh, they transit to a pre-open state. Uh, 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 and from this pre-open state, it could go to either open or desensitized state. And uh, basically, we have uh, determined which are the major changes between closed states, uh, open state, and desensitized state. Uh, we, we have observed how lipids bind in the transmembrane region of the receptor. And here I have to say that we have even seen that some lipids seem to change between open and desensitized state. I haven't gone into this, but this is also observed in our data. Uh, GLUE2 occupies uh, the port distal subunit that you can see here. And this uh, uh, subunit uh, is dominant in gating. Uh, we have also determined that uh, TARP gamma 8 uh, forms uh, state dependent interactions with the ligand binding domain. And finally, uh, we have determined that uh, I solution uh, 613 that was in the M3 helix of the AMPA receptor connects the gate that opens uh, during AMPA receptor uh, opening with the pore that determines uh, calcium permeability and conductance. Um, with this, I, I finished. Uh, this is all the people that has been involved in this project. Uh, this is Ingo Greger's lab already a few years ago. All these people have been involved in this project, uh, molecular dynamics people uh, and, and also uh, uh, electrophysiologists. And then uh, Javier Garcia, uh, that uh, he was also involved in, in, in the first part in the resting state structure. Then uh, Jan Niklas and, and, and Bianca, uh, who uh, work in this uh, second project uh, uh, with the open and the sensitized. Uh, all the people at LMB uh, uh, that help us uh, at all stages of, 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 the, of the process. Uh, people at EVIC, uh, where we collected data. And then uh, this is my small lab at the moment that we are also working on, on AMPA receptors on different projects. And, and that's it. Uh, thank you all for your attention. And if you have any, any questions, please uh, let me know. Yeah, thank you very much, Beatrice. It's a very nice talk. So now is our Q&A session. So if anyone have questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, so, uh, so maybe I will go to the first, I will be the first one to ask a question. Um, so I saw like uh, in your like structures, you see the lipids bind to the transmembrane domains. And, but you said like you mentioned you use a digitoning or like yeah. to extract the protein. Uh, it, it's that lipids actually from the native um, like uh, resources, right? It's not you add the extra lipids in by the, yeah, I, did, I didn't use any any lipid at all. Uh, um, it was all done in digitonin. And in the first project, in the first part, in the resting state, we were not really sure whether uh, they were digitonin or, or, or lipids, actually. But uh, when we went to higher resolution, it, it became clear that those were annular lipids. And 
these are structural lipids and probably they have an effect on, on, on function because they are really there all the time and, and even touching the, the pore of the AMPA receptor. So um, they remain bound probably because they are binding to high, uh, with high affinity. Also, the digitonin is not a, a very harsh detergent. So it seems it's keeping the, the lipids there. Yeah, so uh, like, uh, I'll, yeah, maybe I ask them the second question. Like, uh, so for the for those lipids, do you think, so you said like it's in the different uh, like conformation, the lipids position also change a little bit. So you do you yes. think it's the lipids like also involved in like uh, controlling the, the channel's function? And we are not, yeah, yeah, they, they could. Uh, but we are not uh, really sure about that. Uh, uh, there, there is one lipid specifically that uh, is changing, and uh, there is also a protein uh, chain. Uh, sorry, a protein residue that is changing uh, with this lipid between opening and desensitized. And uh, we have uh, we haven't really uh, gone into detail to understand the role of this lipid. Although in Ingo's lab they are trying to analyze which specific lipids are uh, bound to AMPA receptors using mass spectrometry. Um, yeah, very nice. Anyone have any other questions? Want to ask? Yeah. Um. Um. I probably jumped in. Um, thank you, um, Beatrice. It's a nice talk. Uh, I just jumped in the middle, so probably I missed some part. Um, I have a question that because I think you kind of like extract a uh, different state of your protein from the uh, same um, huge particle data set. And have you tried to put this huge data set directly into some like a cryo EM dynamic analysis, like um, a 3D viability in CrossBug or um, cryo dragon and try to see whether they can catch the dynamic um, process uh, between the different state which we have classified by the 3D classification yeah thank you yes uh, yeah uh, actually uh, we, we haven't tried cryo cryo dragon or or, or cryo spark uh, and this is something that uh, especially uh, James that is the molecular dynamic uh, guy he's he's uh, focusing now trying to uh, or, or he wants to try now uh, to explore the dynamics in the within the data set to see if we can really improve uh, the quality of, of those maps and and also understanding how these structural changes uh, are related with with the functional states. Yes. Okay. Oh. Um, can I ask uh, the other one? Um, you are talking about you said you th there's some evidence show the lipid dissipation will change during the different states. Um, would yes. you mind to kind of like show um, which kind of evidence you have gained to kind of make this? Um, I mean. As I said, we haven't really uh, made the mutants, uh, but uh, there is. Uh, let, let me check if uh, I uh, maybe in this in this image here. Um, sorry. So basically, uh, uh, this lipid here that uh, we see uh, here on the on the on the left. Uh, uh, it's interacting with some residues here uh, uh, from the tarp and, and um, from the uh, glue one. And uh, basically uh, one of the side chains here is changing from opening to the sensitize and then the, the, the head of this lipid is, is it really changing. We haven't made the mutant and analyze uh, uh, how relevant is this structural change. But uh, basically, we observe differences in the in the cryo EM density. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I cannot say much about this. <laughs> but mm. no, that's still good. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. If anyone have any another questions, please feel free to ask. Yeah. So. Okay, I may ask my third question. <laughs> yeah, like, so what's the future directions you, for this project you wanna do after like uh, solving all those, like? 
Yeah, I mean, in the uh, so basically, this is a uh, currently Ingo's project, and he is proceeding uh, with, uh, for example, uh, with this complex in the presence of cornishon, uh, that is an, another auxiliary protein. And indeed, last year they also published a structure with cornishon. And I am uh, focusing uh, basically on uh, other uh, homomeric kappa receptors uh, that are calcium permeable. And uh, basically, uh, also the interaction with those receptors uh, uh, with auxiliary proteins whose structure is currently unknown, because uh, uh, from the AMPA receptor families, there are still uh, some auxiliary proteins that are uh, not known. It's not known even where they do interact with AMPA receptors, it comes and syndic one. So I'm focusing on, on, on this at the moment. And also on, um, on extracting the proteins in 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 nanodisc and trying to to get these structures in nanodisc because uh, we think that these lipids might be important but uh, we think maybe we don't know but maybe in a lipidic environment we we get some some information about that yes yes like uh, so you are going to solve the structure like in the native like kind of native like lipids environment right Yes, we are trying both uh, uh, copolymer. We are trying copolymers and, and MSP-based nanodisc. Yeah, sounds good. Um, anyone? So, is anyone have any other questions? Please feel free to ask. Jinhao, do you have questions? Yeah, I just want to pop up with a. Uh very simple question that uh, since you use digital have you ever tried other detergents or in combinations to cerebralize the amper receptor or why do you pick a uh, detergent um, a digitonin as the detergent yeah the yes have yeah. you tried to screen other detergents yes uh, uh, we 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 have tried a lot uh, with different detergents uh, uh, and also there are uh, proteomic studies on, on AMPA receptors with different detergents. So we had some information before starting the project. And uh, one of the things that was that uh, TARPs, if for example, you use a DDM, they have a lower affinity for AMPA receptors, then you lose uh, part of the TARPs. And therefore uh, we had to use uh, one of these uh, detergents. We tried uh, several, LMNG, C12, C9, uh, and several other detergents. And then uh, our better results were obtained with, with digitonin, but we collected data in, in other detergents as well. Yes, so um, yeah, basically the proteomics analysis of, of AMPA receptors in the brain are, are are large and and we knew that we were we shouldn't use a hard harsh uh, detergent for the complexes. Um, thank you, thank you. And by the way, the talk is very wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Um. So we still have a few more minutes. Do you, if anyone have questions, please feel free to ask. Hello, I may go for one. Hi, hello. Thanks for the nice talk. So in this slide where you were showing the data collection, the summary of that, I think you showed about what, almost 10,000 movies and it was about half a million particles, right? So is that yep. half a million particles after classification or is that the initial number of particles? You no, no, uh, this is after classification. So basically with AMPARTS, uh, we do a round of two Ds and we do 3D classifications with alignment. And what happens with AMPARTS is because the NTD is, is moving all over the place. Uh, basically, we remove everything that is not an AMPAR only. And then we took everything else and we proceed with a focus refinement and so on. But uh, I cannot really classify uh, in the standard way using 3D alignment and classification AMPAR receptor. So we always remove what is clearly not an AMPAR and then we focus on, on, on the TMD LVD and, and we continue with this. I see. And the other thing I was wondering is that the pixel size was larger than one angstrom or around one angstrom yeah. instead of like, you know, many people nowadays use like half an angstrom, right? So what yeah. was the reason for that? I'm, I'm curious. 
Well, that that was. Uh, 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 I'm not really sure why it was like that. This was collected already 2019. So probably today we would adopt a different strategy and definitely we would collect at lower pixel size because indeed the data are, are quite good and probably we would have got even higher resolution. But uh, yeah, and this was early days of the K3 uh, and uh, we did it in this way, yeah. All right, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you, Beatrice. Um, so we still have five more minutes. So. Anyone have any other questions want to ask? Um, yeah, me again, it's uh, Jason from MIPS. I have a naive question for the Iron Channel guys because I never tried to do some work for that. I think one slide you showed the um, iron density, I think it's a calcium in the tra channel. I'm curious about the quality about um, the density of the iron. And can you identify like whether it will have formed some like a coordinate with the surrounding residue from the protein? How could you kind of like model yeah. is the kind of a sphere uh, blob as an arm, but not other kind of item like water or something else? Yeah. Yeah, it could definitely uh, be water. We are not really sure whether they are ions or not. I mean, they were consistently seen in, in our maps, as I said, in C1 and C2 symmetry. And uh, it's not really a high resolution enough to be sure whether these are sodium or, or water uh, or waters or what they are. So I would take uh, these results uh, with uh, care. I, I'm not really sure whether they are ions or not. Probably if, if we had there a calcium permeable lampar, uh, um, that it's uh, the calcium will be bigger and probably we would be more sure about the the whether this is an ion or not. So okay. yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's it's a it's really good talk and uh, quite interesting work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Please. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's our last question. So I would like to say thank you to everyone to join us today and also special to our speaker Beatrice Hagudas to give such an interesting talk. So our next seminar speaker will be Assistant Professor Jianping Wu on 14th June. So hope everyone have a, um, enjoy the rest of your day and see you guys next time on 14th June. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. See you. See you.